So Borderlands 3 had a pretty crazy update where you can now start a level 72 character with uh, story completed. And now we have the auto sell function. And this is what this video is going to go about because there's a common misconception that purples are bad. And this auto sell rarity is really cool, but you don't want to set it to epic because there are actually some really good purple guns, either unique or non-unique, as well as some blue, but it kind of matters less because unless it's a unique, they're just worse purples. So I'll be going over that because people say purple is bad, but they're actually not. Uh, I have a list of things and some of them matter on different builds, but we'll go over them all. Um, the first ones, I want to go over the big ones, which are the stagecoach. Uh, this is something that people will think the Hellwalker is better, but it's pretty on par depending on the Vault Hunter. A lot of times better. Um, times 25 or times 21 will work. Times 21 is a bit easier to get while still being on par with times 25. Well, times 25 is still better. You also have the protuberance. You can get like something with the 48k, 50k on here, or you could get a roll that has 8k here. Um, it's one damage roll that does it. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, you see here the damage uh, magazine. It has plus 620% increased damage. That's what does it. So you want the uh, that protuberance like that. The carbuncle is a very solid splash pistol. And you've got the lump. Everyone knows the lump. It is very good. And you've got the sh TDRs. The short shot is insane. Same with the keen fire and the everblast. These are very important because these are like high end purple weapons that you want if you want a TDR build. And if you have auto sell on, you're going to miss out on these because they are part dependent to where you want homing Merv on these. I have the Q system here, which kind of got outclassed with the OPQ system. It is different. A lot of purples, not really the ones that I'm listing, but a good amount of purples are solid but they are just worse legendary versions. So I'm not really mentioning those. You've also got the bang stick, mainly just used for pre-stacking, but I think it could still do some pretty good damage. And by pre-stacking, I mean um, the stack bot stacking, which you do with a low level one. So it doesn't matter as much, but I'm sure a high level one can do pretty solid damage. And then you've got the Torg launchers with stickies, which are really good, like the Quickie and the Hedgehog. And then one of like the most important things here is the Crit SMG. Uh, this is one of the strongest SMGs in the game for your everyday gun build. Just one of the strongest guns for your everyday gun build besides Moe's. If you drop this and then pick it back up and you have the epic auto sale on, it will sell the crit, and then you just lose this weapon. So well, that's kind of dumb. That's what happens. I think it would be nice if they excluded uniques in this auto sell, but they don't. But yeah, the crit is going to be lost. And that's really like the number one reason why you should not have the auto sell on, because you lose the crit. Besides, I mean, like the short shot, king fire, and everblast. But yeah, the crit's insane. Then we have the Dakota, which is a pretty solid shotgun still. Uh, and then you have some uh, stuff like the Icebreaker, which is also very solid. And then some blues we have are the Shrieking Devils, very good on Zane with Hustler Racer tech. Same with the Chompers, actually pretty solid with Hustler Racer. It redoes the effects. The Hail is just a really good doll AR. That you want to keep an eye out on. The Hey Chad's very fun for some niche ammo region stuff. Easy to do on bows if you have some sort of ammo region. Which is like redistribution. So you have that going. I really like it with the Atlas replay. But not excluded to that. I've also done stuff with it on Zane. So it's more of a utility gun. But still really nice. So that's where 
some points where even blue auto cell isn't really the best option here. And then for shields, we have a couple shields. I mean, the number one shield that you will regret is the one shotter shield. It's triple amp, a meta shield option. Very good. And you don't want to lose out on that. Um, if you actually pick this up and sell it, because you'll just be like, oh, I got to get this. So you'll pick it up or buy it and it'll just get sold. And then you'll be like, oh, damn. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely don't want to miss out on that. And then some other decent ones are the all-in shield. The action skill cooldown rate is amazing. Uh, Ember's Blaze has some solid damage going on. Double downer with the fight for your life. Um, duration is pretty nice. You got Loop of Angel as well for action skill cooldown. Like the um, all-in shield. And then you have the Revengeinator, which is very fun and solid. Uh, but... Out of all of these, the one shotter is like the biggest thing. Like if you actually sell one of these, it's going to hurt because this is very rare and very hard to get and very strong. And then for grenades, we have a couple grenades, but the big one is the fixative longbow, which is a Hyperion triple sticky grenade. Now triple stickies are insane and do some crazy double dipping stuff. Um, you don't need the longbow, but it definitely is the easiest to use. You have the cloning manning tracker as well, which while it kind of sucks now compared to the hex, it still is solid for means of destruction spam on Moe's. And then you have the burning summit, which is fun for some um, elemental projector cheese, which you only get one, well, technically two of for some reason. Per character, so if you actually lose that, that's not very fun. And you've got the pipe bomb, which is very solid for damage, as well as the miracle bomb and the whispering ice. All very solid grenades for grenade builds that losing out on would not be very fun. Class mods, purple class mods get very overlooked. One problem is that they don't have three passes, but some of them just have skills that um, legendary class mods do as well. But first of all, on Zane, as I'm mainly a Zane channel, the Radical is an insane class mod for Zane. Uh, very nice with the cold board points for even more bonus element and swap speed. So that is very nice here with max cold board. You also have the Agent and the Disruptor, which can roll points in Violent Momentum. This can be really nice if you don't have a good Anti-Freeze, which can be a pain to farm. And you don't want an infiltrator with a build, especially if you want something like amp going on, then the agent or disruptor can be a better option. Disruptor being better because it has better skill rolls compared to the agent. And then the deceiver is like a pretty fun but niche and can kind of be ignored. It rolls Trick the Light and um, Donnie Brook, which can be fun for some non gun stuff, uh, as it'll help with both drone and clone which is pretty fun and overlooked. Um, just something to keep out on. For Amara, you have the Mantis, which is like one of the best bossing class mods as it has transcend points, which is insane. You get six out of three on that, and it's really good because you can make it stack twice. Uh, this is what you really want to look out for. And then you have the Aesthetic class mod, which is the purple. It can roll burn both ends and body of mind. Um, I know burn both ends is huge for this, but having body and mind points can also be really nice here. Uh, so that is what to look out for. It can roll at man, but nothing big about it. Just skill damage. And you also have the brawler class mod. Getting a good rolled one of these can be nice. You do have the breaker, which can also roll uh, personal space, but it also can roll Samsara, which is pretty fun. Um, I like Samsara, but it's mainly for the personal space points. So if you find a good one, it can be nice. And then for Flak, I don't have one on me, but the Overdrive class mod is huge because it has points in Rage and Recover being like optimal survivability for Flak on a class mod. A uh, really good thing there just because 10 out of the 5 rage and recover is crack and if you want survivability that is the class mod for you but flak also has a bushmaster and headcase which can roll points and leave no trace which is really nice then you have thrillbot which can roll most dangerous game big game and um 
the machine, which is really, really nice. Um, mainly for the most dangerous game and hit and uh big game, but hidden machine is still really nice to get. And then most class mods just have a lot of good class mods with good skill rolls. We got Tank Gal, which I really like because it is the only class mod that gives a point into some for the road. So you could do some fun stuff where you get that instead of having to go deep green. You have the Marksman class mod, which is really cool. You can get another point of redistribution as well as Scorching RPMs. Um, Experimental Munitions is there, but it's not really that good of a skill. Um, so it's more of RPMs and redistribution. You have this, which can get points in Failing Doctrine, which you can only get in Blood Letter. You have the Firewalker Com. There's also a couple class mods that can roll Fire and Escagnon. It's fun because it has um, Stoke the Embers and um, Drowning in Brass. Then you have the Low Life class mod, which has points into um, points into Thin Red Line and Desert Measures, as well as Click Click, which is fun. And then for the artifacts, you just have Mysterious Amulet. Uh, Mysterious Amulet exposes hidden um, Iridian stuff, but you don't really need it, but it still is really good. But the other thing is you can find some really good artifact rolls. Um, like, even without the legendary prefix, there's purple artifacts that can be better than the legendary if you get a really good rolled one. So you've got, like, Snowdrift with the heavy weapon damage, air effect, Icebreaker with these passives, Spark Plug, all really good. So you always want to keep an eye out for these ones. Hell, probably even a blue one could be good, but I wouldn't even worry too much about that one. But that's it for the video. Um, yeah, purples are good. Uh, I don't have any gameplay on this, just because I don't really feel like it. Uh, but it's all really good here. Um, all of these weapons are very nice, and these are not all of the good ones. There are probably more out there, but those are the main ones, and I did go over some that I think are good and some that are okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, honestly, biggest thing is TDR to me. TDR and, and the crit, you want those. You got the hail as well, like, and artifacts. Some of the class modes are fun, but not needed. The one charter shield, definitely want... The Fixative Longbow, this is one of the strongest nades, gr grenades in the game. You definitely want that. The Stage Gooch, still plenty of fun. Not needed. Still very good. Carbuncle's a bunch of fun. So is Protuberance. Like, yeah, don't auto-sell the purples. Maybe even not blues. And just sell greens and whites that you find. Um, that's probably what I would do. I mean, of course, if you don't have any blues on you, then you don't need to. As well as these blues being like quest rewards so you won't really screw up on it you might but yeah thanks for watching if you found this helpful make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys next time peace